Well, we're pleased to have been able to travel to March uh, to meet Ruth Clay, who is the Bishop's Advisor for Urban Estates. Ruth, it's great to, to be able to have this conversation, but I wonder, Bishop's Advisor for Urban Estates sounds really grand, but what on earth do, uh, do we mean by urban estates? I think in the context of uh, Ely Diocese, we're talking about uh, low-income communities, maybe communities that are a bit stuck, a bit on the edge of places, uh, groups of people and communities who are perhaps a bit more disadvantaged than some, and who struggle with a whole range of factors which might contribute to poverty and yeah, being disadvantaged. So, so, as we mentioned, you're based in March yep. uh, at the moment, but you haven't always been based here, have you? Tell us something about your, your pre previous existence and experiences. Hey, so I um, spent about 35 years in the Midlands, uh, in very urban, uh, disadvantaged areas uh, of Warsaw and Wolverhampton. And um, in that big period of time, did a whole range of things, including uh, youth and community work and teaching and training. Um, and ended up running a pupil referral unit for predominantly young men who were kicked out of school or at risk of exclusion. Uh, we spent a lot of time working with young people um, on the streets, people who uh, perhaps didn't engage well with local services um, and who just struggle with a whole raft of issues, uh, including in some cases um, uh, being very young offenders or, or they well, they just came from backgrounds where they weren't given a chance to make the most of the gifts that they got. And as well as all the issues they got, they were full of uh, lots of talents and gifts. And uh, it was great to see some of those drawn out and uh, to see people thrive and get back on track and make something of themselves. So, I mean, you mentioned some of the issues that, that uh, we may encounter on, on urban estates. What else do you notice uh, through, through your time in the diocese? So, I've not been here very long. Um, I think there's a real um, disparity between the haves and the have-nots. I think there are, um, because there are a majority of people who are in more advantaged communities, if you like, um, I think sometimes it's hard to notice the, um, the more disadvantaged ones because they might not be quite as obvious as in some urban areas where you might have more uh, kind of in-your-face poverty. Um, I think uh, what I have noticed is that behind the scenes there's lots of um, people struggling uh, with a food crisis, with food security, uh, with, um, with employment and access to employment, um, uh, with uh, just having no aspiration. There's so many people here in March who don't believe they can and um, don't believe they ever really will and because they haven't got models of people who necessarily have moved beyond what they know. Um, when you're out in fence, transport links are not quite so easy, there's been a lot of train strikes recently, a lot of bus, buses axed and those sort of things. So even when people want to do things, sometimes it's hard to, um, hard to access, whether it be training or education or, uh, and so on. The challenges to me sound huge mm -hmm. and yet as a church we have a message of hope. Absolutely. Um, how, in your opinion and through your experience, how can we as a local church help to communicate that hope-filled message? I think part of it is noticing people, noticing individuals mm -hmm. um, and um, so not necessarily trying to go out and, and do massive projects or big initiatives, but building, it's importance of building meaningful relationships with people in all parts of society. Um, and not just assuming the worst, and not just assuming a kind of them and us uh, stance, so because they live in somewhere like this, these are the issues they will face, mm -hmm. but really to sort of think, well, let's spend some time together and find out what the issues you're facing, what the issues I'm facing, so it's a more mutual relationship. People don't want to necessarily be helped and sorted and fixed. They, they want people to be aware of them, to value them within the context they are, and then to support them to find solutions um, to some of the issues.
And you've said in the past about being a voice, mm. that, that actually that's important, and that, I suppose, advocacy. So for me, being a voice is about, first of all, listening well. Uh, and I think we're very quick to want to fix things for people. We're very quick to say, oh, we've got an urban estates advisor who can go in, find out what needs to happen, and then make it happen, or, or help make it happen. And I think sometimes it's much more multi-layered than that. Um, it's about making sure that uh, people in a whole range of areas are, are really listened to and deeply listened to um, and then um, supported to bring their contributions um, with, if necessary, reasonable adjustments to the national table, the regional table, the local table. You know, it's, we do a lot of talking at the moment about raising up um, lay ministry, raising up local leadership. Um, but that has its challenges, and so people need to listen to the challenges and not assume that the, the issues that one set of people have might be the same for another set of people. So uh, we need to make sure that the, the resources are put in, uh, whether it be for clergy, laity, or local uh, ministry training, uh, youth and children's work training, whatever it is, um, that, that people can actually access it um, with transport and um, that it will be presented in ways which um, perhaps take into account a variety of literacy levels and uh, prior learning and, and so on and so forth. Um, so it's listening first, it's um, not branding everybody in a certain way, it's not othering people um, and it's, it's really making sure that people uh, get an opportunity, uh, whether it be in diocesan publications, at diocesan events um, or having people from the wider diocese come out to us and actually, um, you know, face things in urban environments or in disadvantaged environments. Um, not just to tick the box that we, we've done that, um, but because these people are equally part of our diocese and um, to really make sure that things are, um, the cry of the people is heard, that we, for what we need and what will enable us to do ministry well. And, and so you, you've been uh, in this position a number of months now. Mm -hmm. what, what are some of the priorities that, that you're working on? What, what, what might your, your work in this area look like uh, on the ground? Yeah, um, so from a, a previous diocesan role that I had uh, in another diocese, the thing that I learned very quickly was people don't take well to yet another diocesan initiative. And, uh, and what, they, what they actually want is um, time. Uh, they want people to build meaningful relationships, which are not for the length of a particular project, um, but actually it, over time that, that will build and that will grow trust and that, um, so they'll have ongoing opportunities in a whole range of different environments. What I would hope is that I can get alongside people, um, listen well to what they have to say, listen well to both their joys and their sorrows, uh, listen well to um, what would enable them to do their work um, even better. Uh, how we can um, use resources and manage resources in such a way that uh, everybody across the diocese can thrive. Um, and that might mean some significant reasonable adjustments to make sure that people in more disadvantaged areas um, can access uh, things that are going on, can access uh, training resources, um, can actually have support maybe from, from other parishes or deaneries. Um, so I think to get together and to pray and to support one another, to be able to go, ah, when it's all a bit mad, um, and when the, when the need is just overwhelming, um, I think that's really important. This winter we uh, are seeing an unprecedented um, need for food banks. You know, going back 10 years ago, we'd have seen a lot less people um, in, in serious homelessness. Um, whereas now we're seeing an awful lot of repossessions, we're seeing a lot of um, people who are really struggling to uh, make ends meet to both heat their houses and, um, and provide hot food for, for families. Uh, there's an awful lot of isolation, uh, an awful lot of mental health issues post-pandemic still. Um, and long waiting lists um, for, you know, for health uh, 
um, services on all levels really. Um, so, you know, given those things, we really want to be um, making sure that the people who work in environments with increased uh, levels of, of um, difficulty are, are actually being well supported for their own mental health, for their own well-being, um, that they're given breaks and they're given support. Um, I think that's very important. So, for a church leader who thinks, oh, actually that's great, I, I, I'm serving on an urban estate within the Ely Diocese, they can get in contact with you and yeah. uh, for a conversation? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm very happy to get alongside people. Um, if there are specific needs, as, you know, we can look together at what resources might be available. Um, and if I don't know, I will always go away and try and find out um, what, you know, what those resources might be. Um, I'll also try and keep raising issues um, in the forums that I can be part of um, so that people know that this isn't just a um, something that they've done once and uh, has now gone away but this is an ongoing issue and, and for some people this is life, life and death issues we're talking about you know it's really about um, being able to thrive well um, you know in, uh, in all the complexities of everyday life um, for other people, it's about being valued um, to bring their contributions to the table. I think one of the things that um, I, I sort of learned previously was that sometimes the sort of things um, that we celebrate uh, in disadvantaged areas, they're not always the sort of things you want to shout about from the front because they're quite personal. Um, they're about individuals uh, making big steps for them and in areas where people can have and always doing great things then it may not be seen as quite so significant but we know that those little things can be absolutely massive for some people and so it's about celebrating the little steps and the achievements and um, and yeah picking up the people that are doing well in these areas and making them know that we really value um, the places that they serve and the ministries that they have Ruth, I want to say thank you for your willingness to step into this uh, leadership role and, and actually one of the things that have struck me in, in our conversations is that actually it's about, yes it's an urban estate title but actually it's about people, mm -hmm. it's about relationship and, and it's about sharing the hope of Christ uh, in, in, in everybody's lives. So Definitely. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.